trying to connect. There we go. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to uh, what is today? Tuesday. Uh, let's see, April 28th. Uh, and we are going to be doing another coffee talk here. And uh, whoa, we already got someone in here saying, Good morning, Scott. I'm ready for the day. All right, now that says Facebook user. So I'm going to need you to put your name in there for some reason. It's not showing your profile, and that could be because of StreamYard, the tool that I'm using to broadcast this. So if you guys could do me a favor, let me know that you're here, drop a comment in, uh, and that would be awesome. And uh, today what we're going to be talking about is the content formula. We've been talking a lot about content. Oh, hey, Karen, what's up? Uh, good morning, Salama. Uh, yeah, so we've been talking a lot about content. And today what I wanted to do is I wanted to drill into how to create a blog post um, that ranks on Google fairly fast. Um, and I say fairly fast because it can happen really fast and it can happen somewhat fast, meaning it might take, I don't know, it might take four weeks, six weeks before it actually ranks, or it can take a week, maybe two. Um, now we can get that thing indexed pretty quickly. Um, and what that means is we can get Google to recognize it. What I want to do here is I want to go through, actually, I'm going to go through seven points or seven key points when you are producing a, a post, uh, a blog post. Um, so this way here, uh, you're able to, uh, to create the, I guess the, the right amount of, uh, optimization that needs to go into something like this. And some people think that it takes this magic. It really doesn't. It just has to follow some of these principles. And that's what I'm going to be covering here with you guys um, today. So got my iPad already uh, and we're going to, we're going to dive in once again. Uh, so what I did want to say, Hey, Jennifer, how are you doing this morning? Good to see you. Deborah, how are you? Glad to see you back. And Mike Smiley, always making me want to smile. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, guys, do me a quick favor, though. Uh, if uh, if you guys would do me a quick favor in the comments, uh, just let me know. And I know some of you already, I know the answer, but anyone that has not let me know this, or even if you have, just put it in the comments. Are you right now creating written content on a weekly basis? Just drop that in the comments and let me know. This way here, I can see exactly uh, who is creating content, who wants to create content. Let me know a little bit about where you're at in that journey. And let me just say, before I get into this content formula, we've been seeing really, really good results um, with our content on three different brands. We have a fourth one that we're rolling out right now following the same protocol. And uh, one of them, uh, or actually, two of them right now are going to be over 20,000 page views for the month um, from following this process. Um, so I'm going to be breaking it down for you. And uh, I see some of you are putting it in there. Uh, not yet. Uh, Nicole, not yet. Leticia, not yet. Uh, yes, I'm currently putting three blogs on my website. Karen, yes, Karen, I know that you are. You're crushing it. Uh, Mike, um, we are creating content weekly now. Awesome. So the ones that are saying that you're not creating content yet, what is holding you back from writing a piece of content to be posted on your website or your blog? Or maybe it's because you don't have a website or a blog yet or a home base. So let me know that in the comments. I would love, um, I'd love to see that. Uh, so let me get, uh, let me see if I can't, I'm going to make sure that my, uh, that my iPad is working. If you guys have any questions on this too, while I'm doing this, let me know. Oh, and also uh, make sure that you invite a friend next time that you come. All right. 10 a.m. Eastern time, we'll be doing these coffee talks here. I'm calling you guys the Take Action Morning Crew. That's what we're going with right now, all right? And uh, let me know uh, if you uh, if you do invite someone so I can give them a shout-out and give you a shout-out. Um, that would be awesome. You can share it on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever, all right? Uh, but let me go ahead and see if I can't get my iPad up here. And I should have had this ready for you guys, but I didn't. So I'm going to have to do it here on the fly. See if I can do this on the fly. All right. And I think I can. There it is. Look at that. Isn't that spectacular? All right. I'm going to go ahead and share. Uh, let's see. Application. There we go. There we go. Boom. You guys should be able to see that now. All right. Cool. Can you guys see that? Can you guys see my iPad? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you can see what I'm doing there. Um, 
So that way there, I know that you guys are seeing what I'm seeing because I'm going to be writing. I'm going to be doodling here. All right. Let me get that out of the way and get up some stuff here. Okay, cool. All right. So number one, when we're thinking about content to write on our website or our blog, we need to do something here. Okay. Number one, we need to have the topic that we are writing about. Okay. So what is the topic? Now there's a couple of different, or actually there's three different buckets. We're going to be talking about the questions bucket. There's the questions bucket. There's the, uh, how to bucket, and then there is the product bucket. Okay. So those are different types of posts that we can create. Okay. But what we want to look at here, and I'm not going to go into how exactly you do this right here. This is a whole nother topic as far as like, how do you find low competition keywords? Because that's what we're looking for. And really what we're looking for is long tail keywords. I'm just going to abbreviate here. Okay. Hopefully you can read that. All right. So what we're looking for here, and we use a tool called Uber Suggest. It's free. Okay. We use Uber suggest to find these keywords. Okay. Now these keywords, we don't care if they only get 20 searches a month, because I'll be honest with you inside of Uber suggest, it's not always accurate. Okay. It's a lot of times not accurate. It's low, very low. Okay. I think last month it said that we, I think we had maybe 2000 uh, page views or, or searches. I should say, uh, we actually had over 13,000. Okay. So it's off but it's actually off in a good direction because that way there, we know if we get, if we have a keyword that gets 20 searches, it might get 200, it might get a thousand. Okay. So always start there. And the other thing is, is I think it's important to not start going down the rabbit hole of like, you have to have everything perfect in order for it to work. You don't. Okay. But you got to get started. So number one is the keyword, making sure that it's low competition, meaning that you don't have a lot of competing pages. Um, and there are ways to do this, but what we do is I just like to do a search, maybe even a Google search, right? Like how to catch more bass in a pond. That's a long tail. Then from there, I would look at the competition on the top 10 search results. And I'd see, is there a forum post popping up? That's a good thing. Is it someone that just has a basic website or blog? And I would then do a little research on them to see how their site is ranking and what it looks like in Uber suggests. So those things, right? But that's what we need to do first. We need to figure out the topic. And then from there, the long tail keyword, that's what we're starting with. All right. Now, number two is whatever that keyword is, that is going to be the exact title of our, of our article. Okay. So exact title. Okay. Now, if we want to get really kind of geeky here on SEO stuff, that's also what they classify it as an H1 tag. Okay. That's what they classify that as. Okay. As far as if you're talking SEO stuff, when you're, when you're posting, that's what it is. Okay. It's a head tag. So basically that title. Now here's one little tip. If you see that an article is ranking in the top 10, and let's say it's uh, how to catch more bass in a pond, okay? And let's just say that uh, we found that there's articles ranking there, but they're not that, they're not exactly that. It's, it's uh, let's say it's how to catch bass, um, how to catch more bass. And that one there pops up for that. Well, I know that I've probably got a better chance to rank if I have an exact match, okay? My title would be the exact phrase that I'm trying to go for, right? So that's one way to see if you have a lot of competition. Now, if you find the whole page is listed with the exact title, exactly the same, then you might want to go the other way for right now. You can do it later. I just wouldn't start with that. For the most part, we always find it. And there might be one or two articles that are, that are exactly the same. A lot of the other ones aren't. So that's one good thing that we look for. So that's number two. Okay. Now in number three, Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to repeat this in paragraph one. Oops, this isn't really working that good today. Okay, so in paragraph one, we are going to repeat that keyword, right? So it might be like, in this article, in this blog post, I'm going to be sharing how to catch more bass in a pond. 
Because one of the things that I found is you can catch some really big fish in a pond. That would be your opening paragraph, right? So you're basically title. You're saying it again. All this is doing, we're not keyword stuffing, by the way. It's natural. Did you hear how natural that was? We're just letting them know that this post is going to answer this question or it's going to show you how, right? So that's it. We want to repeat that. That's number three. Okay. Now, number four, I'm just looking at my notes down here because I wrote them out before because I wanted to be prepared. Number four is going to be your subheads. Okay. So basically when you write a post, you want it to have subheads, right? So, uh, it, it would be something like, um, uh, best lures, right? Best lures. Okay. To catch bass. Okay. So that's it. Best lures to catch bass. That would be what we call an H2 tag. Okay. Not getting too geeky here. Okay. This is just basic principles. So if you take best lures to catch bass and that's a subhead, right? Now we're talking about that. Then we might talk about worms. Then we might talk about uh, poles. Then we might talk. So everyone would be best lures to catch bass, um, best location in pond to catch bass, like whatever, right? We're just repeating certain things that are related to it, but we're not using the exact same thing. But again, we don't really think a lot of like the, the H2 tags all that much. We just want it to relate to the, the topic that we're talking about. So that's number four. Number five, this is a big one. Images that support the post. Okay. People love visuals. Okay. And we also want to break that thing down. We don't want it to be just this long block of text. We want to break it down. One little tip here. Images are searchable by Google as well. They also help to support a post when the Google bot is looking at the post. So what we want to do is we want to, we want to, uh, title images with keywords. Okay. So that, that one there might be like best lures to catch bass. You might have a picture of lures and that picture is titled, uh, best lures to catch bass. Right? So if someone's searching for that, guess what? Those images could pop up too. Right? And it also supports the post. So that's what we want to do there. Okay. So that's number five. Okay. Number six is this here. If you're using WordPress, if you're not using WordPress, there's other plugins out there that'll do this, but I'm talking about Yoast SEO plugin. Okay. That plugin right there will give you a whole checklist of what you can basically just look for in your post to make sure that you're following the basic optimization process. That's it. Okay. That's what you're going to do. Okay. And then on uh, number seven, and that is interlinking. Okay. Well, that's bad. I got to erase that one. Let's do that one again. Inner. I got to slow down when I'm writing. Link. So interlinking, meaning if you have other posts that are related, you want to cross promote them internally. And what this does, it also tells Google that you have related content that could be, you know, kind of tossed back and forth. And then also when someone comes on your site, you're able to keep them in your ecosystem longer. All right. So there is seven, okay, seven things that you can do right now to follow. So we have right here, we have, let me do this. We have long tail keywords, use Uber suggest to get some ideas. We want that exact title in the title, right? The exact keyword in the title. That's an H1 tag, they call that. We want to repeat that in paragraph number one, number four, best lures to catch bass. That's an H2 tag in a sense. You can have multiple ones of those and you can even bold them. Images that support the post, nice images. You can find royalty-free ones, make sure they're royalty-free, and then also make sure that you resave them and then you title them with your keywords and then a Yoast plugin or something similar that will allow you to go through this checklist and then seven interlink. The other one that I would say would be another one. And in Yoast will tell you to do this, by the way, is they're going to tell you 
to external link. So you might find, I don't know, bassfishingworld.com. I don't even know if that's such a thing. You would take and you would link to that because it's a good resource. It also shows that you're linking out to an authoritative site. Or maybe it's Dick's Sporting Goods, right? Or um, uh, Pro Bass Shop or whatever, right? Like all of that stuff. All right. Now, let me just show you something real quick. Okay. So now what we want to, I want to show you is so like if we're, if we're looking at this as a blog post, like how to catch bass in pond, right? Now, I'm not going to list everything out. That's the title, right? That's the title of the blog post. Then here in the very first paragraph, that that would also be in here, right? And then you might have an image here, right? And then you would have text here. And then you would have an H2 title here. And then you would have maybe an image over here, right? And then you would go over here and maybe have another image and maybe some supporting text. See, see how I'm breaking it up? So we're breaking this all up right here. So this way here, it makes it nicer, right? So you can follow it along. Plus we're giving, we're giving uh, Google what they want, right? So we have H1 tag up here. We have, uh, H1 that is repeated here. And then we have, again, like uh, the keywords in here. We have an H2 here, right? So that's kind of how we build out the post. That's it. All right. So let's see here. Uh, let's see if we have any questions while we're doing this. Oh, I didn't uh, take that off. If you guys have any questions, let me know. All right. Now, guys, also let, let me just say this, and this is a little bit off topic. Tomorrow I'm gonna be doing uh I'm gonna be doing this kind of topic, but on video. We're gonna talk about video tomorrow. Speaking of video, all right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to link after this is all said and done here, this live that we're doing. If you're watching this later, if you go right here, there's going to be a complete setup of my video equipment that you guys asked for. All right. So if you're watching this live, you don't see it yet. That video is posting today uh, and you'll be able to find it right here, okay? Now, tomorrow though, we are going to be talking about video content, okay? And really how to simplify it and also allow it to be useful to your, you know, to your brand or to your people that are, you know, looking for your brand. And then also how to simplify it, how to make it so this way here, it doesn't have to be hard. All right, so let me go ahead and oh, it looks like uh, let's make sure if we have any got if we have any questions here, guys, let me know. So I'm gonna go and remove that, bring me back, and then we're gonna go and look at some questions here. All right. Okay, how do you find lifestyle photos or images you can use if you're not the face of your brand? All right, there's a lot of free sites out. There's Pixel Bay is one. Uh, you can. You can go to uh, some paid ones out there. Adobe has their own. There's iStock Photo. Uh, there's a bunch of free ones out there as well. Just make sure that you uh, that you you know use a royalty free type image. Okay, just don't take an image and copy it. Um, Justin, is it easier to rank if the author of the blog posts in an authority or an authority rather than blogging as an admin? No, I don't think it makes one bit of difference. Um, because you can have a, a bunch of different contributors and that's actually what we like to do is have contributors on the blog. So I wouldn't get worried about the author of who is writing the post at all. It's more about the author, the, the authoritativeness of the, the blog or the website itself. Good question though. Helene, what's up? Good morning, Scott. Today was fantastic time for me to get to work on exactly what you just explained. Looking forward to the video tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. That's what we're going to be talking about. So if you guys have any questions on video. Um, like I said, a lot of you have wanted to know, okay, Scott, what does your setup here look like for doing lives? Should I do lives? I think you should, if you can, or if your, you know, if your market will lend itself to it. Now, if you had to pick between the two, whatever is easier for you, I'm a fan of, 
Because if it's easier for you, that means you're going to do it. Okay. So you want to make sure that whatever you're choosing as your platform, as your, you know, your, uh, you know, your place that you're going to be posting, make sure that you're going to be able to, you know, really show up and do it consistently. Consistency is the ultimate. Like that is what we're doing here. We have to be consistent, right? So for me, you know, writing these, uh, these blog posts and stuff, I'm not writing them for the most part. I'm having a writer do them. I'm having an editor that I've trained go through the editing process. Okay. So everything that we just went through there, we've kind of streamlined that. So this way here, it's just protocol, right? It's like find those low competition keywords at first. We're going to start to go for higher ones later. Like right now, our, our, uh, two test brands inside of brand creators Academy, um, they're, and they're going to be over 25,000 page views. Now, uh, we started with really, really low competition keywords. Like I'm talking some that say they only get 10 searches a month. Okay. But then we started scaling up to where like, okay, that one gets 1500 searches. I'm going to go for that one. And now we're ranking on page one in position four. So we're getting traffic now, but we build up to that. You want to start with those low competition keywords, get yourself in a rhythm, start learning it, but start posting. Okay. Uh, so let's see any other quick questions, guys, before we wrap up for today, is it a good idea to repurpose video into text and post it as a blog? Does length matter? I love that. Okay. So here, there's a couple different things that we can do. Let's say that I wrote that post. Okay. As far as how to catch more bass in a pond. Let's say that I wrote that post. It lives on the blog now a great supporting piece of content, and it will give you another uh, channel to post it on is video. So you would take that post and then you would just either show up on camera yourself and just, you know, explain what's in the blog post, or you can just have bullet points and riff on it. That's it. That's all you got to do. Then you would post that on YouTube, take the YouTube video, embed it on your website. Okay. This will allow you to get views through the post that's, that's also getting ranked. And then a video that's ranking could also drive views or drive, uh, you know, traffic. So I love that. If you are thinking to yourself, I, I don't want to do video, then you don't have to. There's also ways you can do video by just showing images or maybe video. And then you narrate over top of it. I've seen some really good results from some brands that are doing that right now. So it's technically an op. It's a, uh, it's an opportunity for you to do it that way. Um, so the, I, I do like that. Uh, Hey, what's up? Hi, hi, Scott. I fly right. Yes. What's up? <laughs> uh, it's funny on YouTube. It, uh, it doesn't display uh, your names and I think I know who that is. Um, but I don't want to say just in case I am pretty sure I know who that is. Um, if you're just starting out, how long should your lives be as long as they need to be right? Like I don't sit here and go, Oh, I gotta be, I gotta be done in 15 minutes or I gotta be done in five. I would say, you know, you want number one, when you're doing lives, it's a little different because when you show up, there's not going to be anybody on at first. It's going to take a little bit of notifications for people to get on. Or if you have an email list, you can let people know, Hey, I'm going to be showing up. If you want to come here, you know, come on and join me. Uh, but typically it's going to take a minute or two before people actually show up. Right. So you got to get into the rhythm of like, okay, what am I going to say for the minute or two while people aren't showing up? Um, I don't really worry about it. I just kind of let it happen. Uh, but um, I would say if you're just starting out, I would just have your framework like I did today, right? Like if all I did was came, if, if I came on here on this live and I said, Hey, listen, I'm going to show you guys the formula that we use to write blog posts. All right. And we're going to jump in here. I'm going to give it a couple minutes for everybody to get on. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, let me know. And Oh, you know, while you're, while you're here, do me a favor, subscribe to YouTube, you know, make sure that you hit the notifications this way here. You make, you know, you, you get all the, uh, the updates whenever I go live. Okay, guys, let's jump in. And then you would jump in, right? So you tell them exactly what they're going to learn. And then you, you dive into that process. You talk about those five points, seven points, whatever you have written down. And then after you're done, you say, Hey, if you got any questions, let me know, drop it in the comments. And then, uh, you know, you can kind of learn from that process as you do it more. But the key is, is having a little bit of a framework of what you're going to be talking about. And that's it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, Scott, and this is from Mike. Uh, I'm experimenting now with something that I think can be helpful to our crew. I hired a woman on Fiverr to convert one of my blog posts to video for 10 bucks. Very nicely done, complete with images and video clips. Yeah, that's a great price, by the way. And the, and the, the, uh, finished product is good, Mike. It sounds really, really good. Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's amazing. Um, Hey Lisa, what's up? Yeah, no problem for the information. 
Uh, you already uh, have a huge advantage, Lisa. I, I know exactly uh, what you're good at, and it's writing. Um, so uh, I think this will be very, very easy for you. Oh, length, uh, size or the length of the post. We typically like 1,500 words minimum, but if it's only 1,200, it's 1,200. Whatever it needs to be, but I would still follow this framework, right? I'd have the exact match in my title. I would repeat it in my first paragraph. And from there, I would start doing subheadings that also relate to the topic. And then I would just fill in the blanks. And naturally, as you talk about this, you don't have to worry about adding more keywords or mentioning this how many times. I don't, I don't go down that road at all. Um, it's really just about following this framework, hitting publish, and on to the next. Um, and the cool thing is, is when you uh, when you start to do this and you start to see like, oh, wow, I, I wrote a post and it was 1200 words and it ranked really well. So I guess it doesn't matter how long it is. I mean, that happens. Um, but if you're also looking at a post that is kind of ranking, so let's say it's in like position eight and you have other, other blogs or, um, you know, content that's above you because they're ranking better. I would then look to see how long their content is, how, how many, uh, how many links they have in it, you know, what they're, I would start really researching that a little bit further to, to kind of see like, why are they ranking more? Is, is it more backlinks, whatever? But in the beginning, I don't worry about any of that stuff, but yeah, length is somewhat important, but not all that important. Uh, if you're just starting out, how often should you post some content? I would say a minimum of once per week. Um, we have something we call the 52 X, uh, strategy inside of brand creators Academy. And it's basically, uh, one post per week. But my thing is make it the exact same time and day every single week. If you do that, you're going to have 52 pieces of content all in your niche for a year. Now, if you can push out two articles or three, that's even better. Um, but I would commit to at least one. Once you get in that rhythm, you're going to see, Oh, I think I'll do an extra one this week, or I think I'll do two now I'll step it up. So I would say that. Hey, Kyle, what's up? Is it better to post four articles all at once or spread them over a month? I would spread them out, not necessarily over a month. If you're only going to have four, then I would spread them out. If, you're, if your blog is brand spanking new, I'd post all four. Like I'd want a catalog of stuff in there as soon as possible. So the way that we usually do it is we'll, we'll, uh, you know, we'll hire out our writing and then let's say we get four back. I'll just post one today, one tomorrow, one the next day, one the next. We'll just drip them out that way. Um, but you do want a little bit of a backlog there. Um, so I would say once you get those written, then I would drip them out. Uh, Helene. Okay. So build your list first before doing lives, or could I just start doing lives without having an, uh, any audience a place, uh, be building the consistency. Yeah, I would do it now. Like do it now, Helene, like seriously, like, and like I'm doing right here, like I've committed to showing up here at 10 AM Eastern time, no matter what. And, uh, usually I don't know what I'm talking about until like the day before today. I, I kind of planned it out for tomorrow because this is related to tomorrow's topic in a sense. Um, but yeah, I would just do it. Even if you have no one watching, it doesn't matter. No, I would not wait to build a list. I would do this. It's going to also get you comfortable on camera and it's going to allow you to get out there, right? We plant seeds. That's what we're doing. We talked about that yesterday, planting seeds in your market. Um, what guidance do you give writers? How long did you, uh, did, do you, or did you write yourself? Did you check before publish? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. The guidance, we have a grooming process now, but it didn't start that way. We would, we, we wrote something ourselves and said, we want it to look like this. And then we would give it to them and then have them produce something. And then we would just keep tweaking back and forth, back and forth. Um, we probably take, it probably takes, if, if the writer is, if we think the writer has potential three to four weeks before you get them to where you can just kind of hand it off. Um, the, the, uh, editing process coming back, we still bring it in. And then I have someone go through it on Grammarly, uh, that checks for copy, uh, or through Copyscape, which is plagiarism. Uh, we, we run it through that. And also just for just, uh, you know, grammar and, uh, and just different phrasing. And right now I think it, takes my editor maybe 10 minutes to do the Grammarly run because our writers are so on point. Uh, Justin, how many posts should you post before you move on to another topic uh, or vertical? Uh, I would say if you have a lot to talk about in that one category, keep running with it. Like I'd go really, really deep in that. And then I would go to the next. Um, 
So if you see that you can keep talking about, like we do uh, content clusters or content trees as we call them. And it's kind of like where you have something that you can just, you know, you have the main thing, how to catch more bass. And then it would be like how to catch more bass in a pond, how to catch more bass in a lake, how to catch more bass, whatever at night. Right. So all of these different verticals, but it's still related to how to catch more bass. And then we might move on to how to catch, uh, I don't know, trout. Right. So we would, we would move on then. Uh, another valuable tip regarding video production. My company used to produce TV commercials, very time consuming, difficult and expensive. Lumen, uh, five now helps me produce website videos easily and free, super easy. Anyone can produce really nice looking videos, which include video clips, image stills, and music, uh, lumen five.com. Yeah. I I've never heard of them to be honest with you, Mike. Um, so definitely check that out for sure. Um, all right, cool. So I think this was good guys. Let me know. Was this helpful? Was this helpful that we went through this today? And also while you're at it, let me know, is there anything that you want me to cover in an upcoming coffee talk? So this way here, I can help you better. All right. And, uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking about video, uh, content and really the formula that I follow, uh, and really also how to repurpose and just leverage the content that we have. To me, content is everything. If we want attention in our market, it, it's all based around uh, content, getting people to know, like, and trust you. And what better way than through content? And if you can do video, it takes it up a notch. And there's a lot of ways that we can leverage that video after we've done it. Um, so uh, one last thing here, I think it was from, oh, okay, Karen says, yes, this has helped uh, immensely. Thanks. Yeah, no problem at all. So one last quick little favor from, uh, from you guys, if you don't mind, uh, would you do me a favor and share this with a friend? That's it. That's the only thing I want you to do. Well, I want you to take action on what we talked about here today, but I want you to share it with a friend. I want this, I want this to grow, but grow with the right people. So only invite someone that you think that would get value or add value to our little coffee talks here in the morning. And I want you to imagine us hanging out in a coffee shop. Um, because, uh, I like hanging out in coffee shops. We can't right now, but I do like whenever we do meetups, I've done a bunch of them. It's always fun. It's uh, just great to be able to connect, but also be able to, to kind of talk back and forth like we are right here. So again, do me a favor, um, invite someone that you think that would get value from this. You can email them, take, take this link and just send it to them in an email. Let them know that we're showing up here at 10 AM Eastern time. And also if you're watching this on YouTube right now, and you're watching this after we're live. You can go right here and you're going to find a list of all of the, our past coffee talks. It's going to be a playlist and you can go right here to, uh, to find that. And then you'll be able to see all of the past topics that we talked about. And today we're at what 30, this is our 30, uh, our 30th coffee talk, which is crazy. Um, Kyle, I would like to learn about backlinking. We'll do that in another episode, but I would tell you this, I would not worry about it right now. Content first content, publish, content, publish, content, publish. We've done zero backlinking on two of our brands right now, actually three, but two that are fairly new and we're getting over 20,000 page views a month now over. Okay. Zero backlinking, but backlinking is important to a certain degree. And there's ways that you can do it that are ethical and that won't get you banned. And they're actually helpful. So uh, we'll talk about that in another one, but I would definitely dig into that in another coffee talk. Uh, for sure. All right, guys. So that is going to wrap up this little coffee talk. Like I said, if you have any other questions for me, or you got a topic that you want me to talk about in an up upcoming coffee talk, just let me know in the comments and do me a favor. Give this a little love. If you feel it's valuable and uh, share it, like it, do whatever you can to give it a little bit of love. I would truly really appreciate it. All right, guys. So that's it. That's going to wrap it up as always. Take care. Take action, and I'll talk to you soon.